CRTOS Memory Allocation Schemes. In this section I will describe more in details memory management schemes possible to be used within FreeRTOS applications. Within FreeRTOS configuration, FreeRTOS config.h file in particular, we are specifying few important parameters related to memory allocation used by FreeRTOS. Type of memory allocation, static, dynamic or mixed. We will focus within this training only on dynamic memory allocation. Then size of RAM space dedicated to freer ties. It is called total heap size given in bytes. And the third one is a memory management scheme where we can select among heap 1, heap 2, heap 3, heap 4 and heap 5 options. On next slides I will describe more in details the differences among those heap files. In majority of memory management schemes FreeRTOS heap is located on free RAM area outside of existing stack and heap areas of the MCU. The only exception is heap free model. Within heap free model, we have full control on memory allocation by creating our own linker file and our own methods to allocate and release the memory. Let's have a closer look on each memory management scheme prepared within FreeRTOS. We will start from the simplest one, heap one. All of the functions supporting this memory management scheme are located within heap underscore one.c file. It uses the first fit algorithm to allocate memory. It is the simplest allocation method. It is deterministic but doesn't allow release of allocated memory. It could be interesting when no memory release is necessary. So in the situation when within our FreeRTOS based application we create all of the components at the beginning of the operating system run and then we do not perform any operation and a change within its structure. The second model, HIP2, is an obsolete one. It is kept due to compatibility reasons. It implements the best fit algorithm for memory allocation and it implements as well the release memory functions but it doesn't combine the released blocks into the bigger ones. It is stored within heap underscore 2.c file. The third model, heap3, stored within heap underscore 3.c file, is a model which needs to be implemented fully by the user. It is using the heap area, which is common with the MCU heap area, and user needs to prepare the linker file and its own implementation of the functions for memory allocation and memory release. We will not focus on this model within this training session. The last two models are the most popular ones. HIP4 is selected for the MCUs where we have continuous RAM area, while HIP5 allows us to concatenate different RAM areas available in the system. Let's start from HIP4. HIP4 is using first fit algorithm to allocate memory. It is able to combine the free memory blocks into the single block. This model is used in all of the STM32Cube examples. It is stored within HIP underscore 4.c file. Complete memory allocation is done automatically by prepared port functions based on our configuration, in particular total HIP size. We don't need to modify here anything. But if you would like to declare our own memory array used by HIP4, we can do it. For this, we need to declare config application allocated HIP. We need to set it to 1 within free RTOS config.h file. And then we need to specify the array. Its name is UC HIP, what we can see here. And the type is unsigned int 8 bit. And the size of this buffer should be config total HIP size. It is important to understand how the memory size to be allocated is calculated. Each call of PV port malloc APA function from heap 4 consumes 8 bytes for the structure of the heap linked list, then we've got n bytes for the data to be allocated itself, and we need to add some padding data to be aligned to 8 bytes. So for example, if we are trying to allocate 52 bytes, we need in fact 52 plus 8 which is 60 bytes, and then we need to align it to 8 bytes, and the nearest value aligned to 8 bytes is 64. So to allocate 52 bytes, we will use in fact 64 bytes of RAM memory from the heap. The last memory management scheme, heap 5, is used in case we have MCU with some RAM areas not visible as a continuous memory space. 
It uses the FIT algorithm able to combine three memory blocks into a single block using the same algorithms like in HIP4, but it is supporting different memory regions, being not in a linear memory space. It is the only memory allocation scheme that must be explicitly initialized before any operating system object can be created, so before any first call of PV port malloc function. To initialize this scheme, we need to call the function vport define heap regions. This function is specifying start address and size of each separate memory area we would like to dedicate for as a heap for our operating system application. On the next slide, I will present the example for STM32L476 device with two different RAM areas, SRAM1 and SRAM2, which are not in linear space. In this example, we need to build our free RTS heap from two areas, one from SRAM1 and the second one from SRAM2. To do this, we need to define heap region underscore t type array, where in each row we will specify start address of the area, starting from lower addresses, and its size in bytes, then the second one. To terminate the array, we need to specify a region with null and zero arguments, like on a below example. Then, we need to call vport define heap regions before calling an operating system create function. Let's have a closer look what we will find in each heap.c file. There are two most important components there. The first one is a function to allocate the memory area. It is always named pvportmalloc. And the second one is a function to release the memory area. It is called pvport3. pvportmalloc is implemented in most of the heap models, except heap3, which needs to be implemented fully by the user. It is starting from freezing of all the tasks, then, in case it is the first call of memory allocation, it is initializing the operating system heap. The next step, it is checking whether the requested block size is not bigger than the available memory size, and if it's in line, the function is allocating the memory block with proper alignment, which we discussed a bit before. At the end, it is unfreezing all the tasks. In case of a memory allocation error, there is an execution of the application malloc failed hook, which should be enabled within the configuration of FreeRTOS and is informing us about any anomalies related to memory allocation. PV port 3 is present in HIP3, HIP4 and HIP5. As you remember, HIP1 doesn't allow us to release the memory. This is why it is not present there. It is starting from freezing of all the tasks, then it is adding the memory segment of available memory. So in case the memory scheme allows us to concatenate the free areas, it is done in this place. And then at the end, it is unfreezing all the tasks. Thank you for watching this video.